So in Crayer Cup, we only have two tire options. Normally we run this, the slick, of course, in dry weather, but every once in a while it'll rain. And then we need to go to a rain tire because this doesn't work in the rain. Standing water, there's nowhere for the water to go. So that's why we have all the grooves here. And it's funny, I mean, there's all kinds of different treads and different things, but really it has to do with surface area and groove area. You're obviously trying to get as much grip as you can, but the important thing is a tire that will get warm and hold temperature and displace the water. So Michelin has came up with this setup for sports cars, for GT cars, and uh, I can tell you it works really good on the 992 Carrera Cup cars. You can actually squeeze this rubber. I mean, it's now, it's not warm or anything like that, just normal temperature, just sitting here. And uh, you can squish this rubber in where, where this actually feels hard. This, you need to get it up to, you know, high 180, 190 degrees. This, it's a, so much more difficult to get temperature in the slippery wet conditions. So that softer compound lets you work the tread back and forth. Uh, it builds temperature and that gets really, really sticky. You know, this tire would last three laps in the dry track, whereas this lasts us an entire race. So when you start operating in lower grip situations like a damp or a wet track, that side load really starts to suffer. So when you're exiting corner, powering down, you're trying to get forward bite and side load, that's what you really lose. Straight line grip and braking grip actually in the rain is surprisingly really, really good. We brake probably 100 feet earlier in the rain so your braking points are moved back, but not as much as, as you would think because there is so much grip in a straight line. But as soon as you try to turn and accelerate, that's when it starts getting really tricky in the lower grip situation. So it's amazing what this can dissipate uh, water-wise, but as soon as you get to the point where the standing water is too much for this to dissipate, then you might as well be on a slick because if the water doesn't move and the tread blocks don't touch the asphalt, then it's basically ice and uh, you're gonna go for a ride. Lap time wise, you know, dry and dry, probably, I don't know, eight seconds or something like that. But in the rain, you know, we qualified uh, low two minutes, whereas the pace was 46, 47 here at uh, VIR. So even in the rain, we're about 15 seconds um, off slick dry, uh, and the tire itself makes up a lot of that. So it's amazing actually what the right tire can do for uh, the right situation, the wet situation. Your inputs with the car, driving the car are different. You need to be smoother, not as much initial hit on the brake. Throttle, all your steering needs to be smoother because you're operating with less grip. You want to move the car around a little bit, but also actually the line on the track is different as well. So I'm going to grab my laptop and show you guys my qualifying lap and how it differs than a normal dry line lap. So this is going down in turn one in the rain during qualifying. Completely different line here. Normally I would be much more to the left. This is right hand corner. But since everybody runs there, when they brake, tire polishes the uh, asphalt. So that gets really, really slippery. Uh, we call it the dry line. So going in turn one right here, I am almost as far to the right side of the track that I normally would be on the left side of the track. I'm completely off from that dry line. Bunch of grip in this area. Right now, I have to transition over the line. As a normal dry line would come in, you would norm how you would normally take the corner. I go over that and actually lose a bunch of grip and you actually see me just catch the steering wheel as uh, the dry line comes into play. Then I move on the outside of the dry line where there is more grip. If I tried to turn in at this point right here and drive the normal line, I wouldn't have any grip, especially at this speed. And I would either probably push or have like a snap over steer as I hit that slippery area. So I just kind of drive as straight over it as I can, still have to turn in immediately afterwards. So now around the apex, I'm about a car width and a half off. I have about this much space from where that dry line uh, starts to interfere. I need to start thinking about powering down now. I need to rotate the car. I have pretty good grip, pretty good front grip. Rear is pretty secure. So I wanna rotate the car while I have this grip. And at VIR, a lot of guys take a really wide exit, especially the prototypes. 
So now I gotta rotate the car and then transition back over the dry line on the exit, try to hug the inside of the exit where all that grip is. A little bit of a lull period here. I have to be really careful with the steering and throttle. Make it through that and then I'm back to full throttle about a car width to the right on the exit of that dry line. In these situations, you're just constantly trying to find grip. Where is the grip? Where can I find the grip? What makes the car turn? What makes it not sketchy to drive? Some of these corners, you have to drive through the dry line more because it's a much tighter corner. But the longer corners like turn one of VR, you can really use the wet line, stay away from the slippery areas and pick up time. Every track's different, every corner's different, every surface is gonna be different. Every single lap, every single corner, you're constantly trying to figure out how much grip is there, where's the grip. That line is really critical to learn, and if you drew it on, it would look completely different you know, than the dry line for sure. Oh, another thing is stay off painted curbs if you're driving in the wet. That's a number one tip. And if you like what we're doing here at 311 RS Motorsport, uh, click like, subscribe, yeah, follow us along. We got more stuff coming for you.